Debugging your React Native app can feel like searching for a needle in a haystack, especially when that one pesky bug is blocking your whole progress. But what if I told you there's a faster, smarter way to track down issues on any level and keep your app running smoothly? In this video, we're diving into the ultimate tools and techniques for debugging React Native apps like a pro. Whether you're battling red screens or sneaky silent errors, stick around, because by the end of this video, you'll have the skills to turn those bugs into dust. What's up React Native friends, Simon here from Galaxies.dev, the home of epic React Native content. Debugging is one of those things every developer has to deal with, but let's be honest, it's not always fun. React Native adds its own unique quirks to the mix and if you're not equipped with the right tools or strategies, you can end up wasting hours chasing down bugs. That's probably also why developers usually rank debugging as their biggest pain point of React Native. In this video, we're going to demystify React Native debugging process and give you a solid toolkit to handle any issues that come your way. We will go from the JavaScript layer and the new dev tools to popular third-party tools and native debugging methods. If you want even more support with your React Native apps, check out galaxies.dev. Galaxies is the only online school 100% focused on React Native and personal support. Whether you're brand new to React Native or you've been using it for a while, there's something here for everyone. Grab a cup of coffee and let's jump right in. All right, so let's start at the basic level. Once you've started your application, doesn't matter if you use like the Expo Go app or you're using pre-built, you can press J in the terminal to open up the new Expo or the new React Native DevTools. We will come to Expo later. These new DevTools are an improvement over what we had in the past and they offer pretty much the same UI as you're used to if you're a web developer. So that means you can go to console, you can see all the console logs, um, it is connected. Once you refresh your application, it automatically updates so it doesn't disconnect all the time, it reconnects automatically. But there are also a couple of other things like you can go into the sources and set breakpoints. Now, right now with my current version, there was a tiny little issue with Expo source maps generation. So this didn't work entirely the whole time, but Cedric also uh, already made a PR for this. It was already merged. Maybe this is already fixed at the time when this video goes live, which would be pretty nice. Now, next to that, we have a memory tab uh, for profiling. We have a pretty cool components tab. So you can see, I can now dive down into, let's say I wanna find something. I, I wonder, is there like a pic? Oh, I didn't know that I could do this. I knew that I could do this with Safari, but I could do it like this. Oh, this is cool. Because now you can actually dive into like the actual text components here. Uh, there's a child. What can I, I'm pretty sure I could change the text somewhere. Hello. Yeah, so you see, I actually updated the text from here in that component tree in my app running. So this helps to understand what's going on in your application. You can of course work with all the props, you can even work with the styling, um, and you can also use profiling for your application. Now, there's also this Network Expo Unstable tab. This was previously already included in a version of Expo when they introduced the DevTools. So with this tab, you can pretty much inspect your network calls and see the responses like this here uh, with some random data included. It's currently marked as unstable, but this will become a core part of the debugging tools here. So from what I know, um, this is only the beginning and they've actually planned a couple of other features already. So if we look at this, uh, the upcoming features are, what features are coming next? Performance panel in progress targeting next year, so 2025. Network panel in progress, so we already got the Expo one and third party Chrome extensions. This is pretty cool because most of the time this will get you quite fat. Um, I also discovered that here under settings, you can actually do a bunch of things. I haven't played with all these settings, but there's a whole lot to discover and talk about regarding the experiments you can run for your application. So really just looking at it and oh, there's a console and a network tab and yeah, this is great. But there's a lot more here under the hood, including the breakpoints and the other things that you can use to debug the JavaScript part of your application. And from here on, it's only getting better. Now, this is only step one. This is cool to debug your local issues, but 
There's another tool that I wasn't aware is actually still relevant. While Flipper is deprecated and you shouldn't use it anymore, Reactotron is actually still helpful. So if you don't know, Reactotron was developed by the team at Infinite Red. Probably everyone in the React Native space knows about Infinite Red. Um, and with Reactotron, while it looks from the UI perspective a, a bit old, and I talked with Jamin uh, about <laughs> this, but um, they're actually working on this. And there are a couple of things that I want to point out that are pretty cool. So, of course, we can by now see the console logs and we see HTTP calls with the dev tools in probably an even better way. But there are things about Reactotron, especially their features and plugins that make it a great addition to your debugging stack. So, things like debugging async storage, debugging MMKV, quickly benchmarking, um, working with Redux, uh, working with Storybook. All these things and including custom commands make Reactotron still a great uh, additional tool set. So you can include this pretty easily with a Reactotron config in your application. Uh, and then you're gonna just run this using the config. And the application is, in my case, I think connected. So if I do something like setting my username here, is it actually connected? I don't know. Um, it probably is, yeah. Then we see all the locks from, can I zoom into this? Oh, nice. You did a great job, Jamin, here. Um, I can dive into this. And for example, here we see that I was working with MMKV. Here I made a custom lock from my application that's now visible in Reactotron. So this is really great if you want to like inspect your state, um, if you want to run custom commands, if you have like, where, where did I trigger that lock? I have no idea. Uh, oh, it was here, Reactotron uh, display. Um, or for example, you could also overlay your whole application with like the design of your designer and then you can try to implement that so it pixel perfectly matches what your designer made for you. These are things that Reactotron brings to the table that go far beyond the usual dev tools from React Native and it's not the purpose of the React Native dev tools to cover these things. But Infinite Red noticed all these things in practical projects and that's what you feel with Reactotron. It's really based on the experience of experienced senior React Native developers and what they need in their daily work. If you're as well an experienced React Native developer, make sure to add Reactotron to your debugging stack. Now what happens if you tried local debugging, you maybe also tried Reactotron, but perhaps your app isn't even starting so you can't connect and don't see any JavaScript logs. Or you want to debug what happens when and you call a certain native module. Well, in that case, it's time to go a step further and that means diving into native debugging tools. So everyone's now like, oh, what is this? I'm getting scared. No, this is Xcode. My friends, I've been working with Xcode for a while. I've been an iOS developer a long time ago, but I was there. So with Xcode, and we will soon cover Android as well, you can also dive into debugging and you can just access all the native debugging tools that native developers use. So in this case, you know, if you're using pre-built, with Expo, you get an iOS folder. Inside, there's a workspace file. Uh, so, uh, should be, is it? Yeah, it's, it looks like a folder here, but it's actually a file usually on the file system. You can open this up with Xcode. You can then hit the run button up here. Okay, it's up here and deploy it to your simulator or connected device. By the way, you can also change your scheme in here somewhere. Where is it? Uh, here, edit scheme. If you change your build configuration here to production, you're actually not using the Metro server anymore and have a standalone application. Quick tip. Uh, check out my video on all the ways to build your Expo app. This covers also things like this. Now, once you've got your app on a device, as I said, you can set breakpoints. For example, here I looked at the pods, development pods. I found, for example, the Expo contact or the Expo image picker. And now if I try to pick an image from the camera roll, we're stopping right here and you have all the power and the control that native iOS developers have. You can dive into uh, all the cool self stuff and the props here uh, or whatever it's called with Swift. I honestly don't know right now. <laughs> uh, and you of course also get uh, any other native locks. So if you want to take a step further and you want to really understand what's going on, you maybe want to take a look more at the native performance stuff, then 
understanding at least a bit how you navigate around Xcode to debug your iOS project with React Native is an essential skill. What we've done for iOS can of course be done exactly the same for Android. So again, if you're using Expo Prebuild, you have a native Android project in here. You can now simply open up Android Studio, import that project, and then from the top, although the UI changes like every other month, there should be something where you can deploy it to an emulator or your connected device. You can either run the application or of course, if you use the cute debug symbol, you can debug your application, which then results in something like this. So I figured out that here in my app, Here's the Expo Image Picker module. Uh, here's the Image Picker module Kotlin implementation and I set a breakpoint. So same thing, if I go to images and pick an image here, I will trigger that breakpoint and I'm right here in the native development and uh, environment of an Android developer. Of course, just like for iOS, this means you sort of have to get a bit familiar with what's going on. There's a lot in Android Studio. It's it's like discovering a whole new world. I'm completely honest. Uh, there's a lot going on that you can do and that you might have to learn, but it is an unbelievable, powerful addition for every React Native developer. Please, don't only rely on JavaScript debugging. This is an essential skill if you want to move along in your React Native developer career. You really need to understand what a native module means, where you can find the native code, and where you eventually can find an entry point into that. Because from here, you could add logs, you could add whatever breakpoints, you can check the params. You will understand most of your bugs with either iOS or Android debugging if you hit a wall previously with JavaScript debugging. Now, finally, I want to mention one thing, and that is about user crashes, because JavaScript debugging, debugging iOS, debugging Android, all of that happens locally, but you have no idea what's going on on the actual user's device. So if the app crashes at a user somewhere completely different in the world, you don't know it, unless you use a software to monitor those errors. In the past, I've relied on Sentry, and although this video isn't sponsored by Sentry, I just want to mention that Sentry is a perfect addition to every React Native developer's stack, especially if you care about your sanity. Um, the integration, you can see it in one of my videos, for example, the uh, it was, I think, the Threads clone. Uh, there I use Sentry, and I will also use it in upcoming clone videos, and probably even more. What you get with Sentry are error reports like this. So whenever something happens for a user, you usually get the exact line of course uh, of the code where something went wrong. You can even dive into GitHub, like if you connect your repository, you can see maybe uh, this commit might be the source of it. And there are some pretty cool new features. For example, uh, screenshots are usually included. And lately they also included session replays. So let me check this out right here. There are session replays where you can understand what happened before um, during and after a user encountered a certain bug in the application. This is really helpful, including all the breadcrumbs a user took. So with that, you have pretty much uh, all, all the chances to fix a bug because you understand them, you will capture them, and then you also already get like a lot of tools and information about where this happened, why it happened, and exactly at which line of code. So again, not sponsored by Sentry, but if you're using them, tell them Simon sent you. Uh, I will put a link below this video as well. Right, that's a wrap. In this video, we covered the essential tools for debugging React Native apps. From JavaScript debugging and Reactortron to native debugging with Xcode and Android Studio. And don't forget, tools like Sentry can take your Android monitoring to the next level in production. Now, I wanna hear from you. What's your go-to debugging tool for React Native? Or do you have any tips and tricks you swear by? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button for more React Native tips, tricks, and tutorials. And don't forget, galaxies.dev is your home of epic React Native content with fast-paced courses and practical projects just like this. If you want to learn more about the latest React Native features, also check out this video up here about the massive Expo SDK 52 release and all the new and updated packages. It's amazing. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, happy coding, Simon.